So in this video, we're going to take a look at setting up surround panning in Ableton Live. Now, as a lot of you know, uh, you know there isn't really any multi-channel support in Ableton Live at this point, something I hope that they'll add in the near future. Um, and I, I should say that there are some much easier ways to do this using Max for Live um, or using a few of the various plugins that are out there that can be used for surround. Um, so I'll, I'll probably do a video about those um, sometime here uh, in the near future. But anyway, in the standard version of uh, Ableton Live, uh, let's say you don't have Max for Live or something like that, you can still do some surround work and uh, I'll show you the basic setup for that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into preferences. I'm going to go to my output configuration and I'm going to need to turn on the additional channels that I need for surround. So on my system, I have the Scarlett 18 i 20. I'm going to use one and two for my left and right channels. I'm going to use three and four as mono channels. Um, that's going to be going to my center and my LFE. Um, and I'll actually go, go ahead and turn off one and two up here. And then I'm going to use seven and eight for my left surround, right surround channels, which is just the way that the Scarlet likes to do it. And that's pretty much it. So again, one and two left, right, three and four are my center and my LFE, seven and eight left surround, right surround. So your particular configuration may vary, but you'll probably want to do something similar to this with left and right on a stereo pair, left surround, right surround on a stereo pair, and then center and LFE on uh, mono channels. So go ahead and click OK on that, and I'll close the preferences. And now let's take a look at how we handle the routing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete these return tracks for, for now, just to keep things uh, clear. Then I'm going to make some new return tracks uh, for each of the outputs in my surround uh, setup. Okay, so you can do create, insert return, which of course is command option T. And I'm going to make for myself four uh, returns. And let's go ahead and name them now. So I'm going to have left, right, center, LSRS, and LFE. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is go to the audio output assignments on those tracks and set them to external out. And my LR is going to be on one and two, so that's already set correctly. My center channel is going to go out on three. My LSRS is going to go to the external out on seven and eight. And my LFE is going to go to external out four. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the audio output on the track and I'm going to choose sends only. Okay. What this does is it allows me to use the fader on the track to set post fader levels for all of my sends. So that's still a really useful thing. But I'm not going to get any signal out of the track that way. I'm going to actually have to turn up one of the sends uh, before I'll get any signal out to my speakers. So I'll go ahead and click play here, and uh, you're not going to hear anything, but you'll be able to see the meters in action over here. Um, so I'll click play, and you can see that even though we're showing signal here on the main track meter, um, there's no signal going to the master. Um, so if I go ahead and turn up send A, I'll get signal into my left right channels. One of the good reasons to do this as a stereo pair is because my regular panner on the track will still work on the LR channels. Um, and if I decide to go to the surrounds, the regular stereo panner will control whether the signal goes to the left surround or the right surround. If I want to go to the center channel, which I'm generally going to reserve for you know just a few things that I want to have focused into the center channel, like a vocal uh, or something like that, then I can turn up send B, go to the center. And if I want to go directly to the LFE, I can do that with send D. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do, um, if you really want to do this right, is you're going to duplicate all of these returns uh, for your reverb sends. Okay, now you're going to end up with a lot of sends on these tracks, and uh, it, it's it's kind of a lot to look at. Um, but that's what you're going to want to do. So I'll go ahead and make myself uh, a few more returns. I'm not going to do one for the LFE, but we'll do our left, right, center, and LSRS. So 
I'll make three more returns. And I'm going to call these LR verb, C verb, and LS, RS verb. Okay. Then, of course, I'll need to assign a reverb onto each of those tracks. Um, so we'll just do a standard uh, Ableton reverb here. And I can put that onto each of these other tracks. And most likely you'll want to make sure that the reverb algorithms are the same on each of those, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you want a longer decay in the uh, surrounds or something like that, then that's definitely possible. And then what you're going to want to do is return these into the LRC and LSRS returns. So I'm going to take my left, right verb, and I'm going to enable the A send. And for the time being, we'll just crank that all the way up so that the signal from the LR verb will also go into the left, right output along with any dry signal that's going to the left, right return. I'm going to do the same with the center channel, which is on my B send here. Enable the send, put that into B, and my LSRS verb, of course, I'm going to enable the send and put into uh, C. Okay, so now what you'll be able to see here is if I send this signal over to one of these, like my left right verb, which is on send E. Turn up send E. And the reverberated signal will go to the LR verb and then make its way over to the left right bus. But then I can control the wet and dry signal on each track independently because I can send the dry signal separately also to left and right, which is generally the best way to use send and return effects. Okay, so that's a basic surround setup in Ableton Live. So one last thing I wanna show you um, is using a control surface to make this process a little bit easier. Um, if you have a controller that has an encoder that you can map inside of Ableton, one of the neat things you can do is you can inversely map the front channels and the rear channels. So let's take a look at that really quickly here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an encoder here on my trigger finger. I'm gonna turn on MIDI mapping and I'm gonna click on that A send and then turn the control, okay? But I'm also gonna map it to the C send. Then what I wanna do is go to the C send and invert the values so that the minimum is at zero and the maximum is at minus infinity. Okay, so now check this out. As I turn this encoder, you'll see that the two controls are inverted. So if I additionally map one of my encoders to left, right pan, what I can do is basically quad panning with two knobs. So front to rear and then left, right. And I'll go ahead and play the audio here so you can see what that's gonna do. I'm pan center in the front. I'm pan center in the rear, okay? And then I can move left front, right front, right rear, left rear, and so on. So again, even though multi-channel isn't supported natively in Ableton Live, there are a lot of features in Ableton that you can leverage to do some pretty cool multi-channel work. And stay tuned for another video in which I'll show you how to use Max for Live or some VST plugins to make this process a lot easier.